We still did it. Okay. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. Can I start? Everything good? Awesome. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for coming here. My name is Edith, and I'm the founder and CEO of Solo.io. And I'm really, really excited to be here for two reasons. Number one, really, really passionate about what we're going to talk today. And number two, I think it was two years since I talked to a real audience. So let's talk. So as I said, Solo is the company that I founded. And we are focusing on solving the application networking app problem. So uh, the connectivity. And as one, we're basically leading this STO community. Our stack is basically STO and Envoy. And therefore, we have working very, very hard upstream. We have two TOC members from the six that exist in STO. And we're working very hard to kind of like push the project uh, uh, forward. We have basically a, a platform called Glue Mesh. And this platform is basically uh, a, built from four pieces. The first one, it's basically the Mesh go, uh, Core. And that's basically what, it's basically an STO upstream with enhanced from us, like external load and rate limiting, east west, uh, set rotation, and a lot of other stuff, and big, big focus on multi clusters. The second one is we basically took the STO ingress a gateway and basically make it a full blown API gateway. So what we did, we extended with a lot of Envoy filter, like WAF, like, um, a, like a data loss provision, like SOAP, the only STO SOAP that exists in the market, and so on. And the last but not least, we have developer portal. Again, the only developer portal that exists for STO in the market today. And it's supporting you know, open API, and as well as gRPC. So that's what we have. And the last and not least, what we have is extension. And extensions is basically the ability to customize the service mesh to your own need. And we're doing it with Wasm. So it's built into our platform. It's uh, working seamlessly. And you will be able to write your own custom filters to Envoy. OK, so that's great. So as I said, service mesh, Envoy proxy, that's where we're focusing. And service mesh is solving a lot of problems, as you all know, because that's why you are here. One of them is networking. The other one is observability. And the last but not least is security and policy. That's the stuff that they are focusing on. This is great. But then what happened is that there is a request coming into your clusters. And there is some gateway that's catching that request. And it's going to some service. And sometimes it's maybe a front-end service, right? Maybe some UI of your application. And then in the UI microservices, you have a lot of code. And what is this code doing? You need to basically aggregate all the data from all those microservices that is connecting to. So maybe what you wanted to ask yourself is, give me all the engineering solo that's working on glue mesh and earning less than 200K. That means that we need to go to the engineering server, to the product service, to the final service, to the, to, to the HA, and basically make the match to return that, that, um, that offer. So this is where GraphQL is coming into the place, right? And as you know, hopefully you know, GraphQL ID is basically to abstract that lost logic and basically suggested that as, as, as an abstraction, basically, you will make one request to the GraphQL service, and the GraphQL service that is basically configured by configuration and declarative configuration will go and do all those run through for you. OK, that's great. So what is GraphQL? GraphQL is basically the ability to, do, to, to, uh, it, to ask all your services, use all your services as a query language, right? Get all the data that you want with query language. And it's very, very, very quick, right? You can see a really quick animation. But basically, as you can see, you're adding field, boom, it's giving you the information. So it's pretty, pretty trivial. Now, it doesn't mean that it needs to do it only for one service, right? It can do it from a lot of services. It doesn't really care how much service you need to query from. And that's what you can see. You have three services here. You're asking a query. You're getting the response. He's going and doing all the round trip for you. You don't know. Honestly, it's abstract from you. So that's what GraphQL is. And the biggest point about GraphQL, and I think it's really, really important, is how easy it's make it to consume it. And I think this is something that you will hear from a lot of our front-end team and UI team. They want GraphQL because then it's one query that they're putting in their application, and basically the data is coming to them. So it's a declarative query. It's quick, and it's bringing you very easy to consume with one, one request. So now the question is, what's the problem? Why am I telling you about it? This is a service mesh call. So we'll tell you why. Because actually build this GraphQL service, it's actually taking a lot of time. 
you need to take some libraries, right? And this library, usually a lot of the time, that at least the leading one is Node.js because it's a UI kind of like font and team. And then you need to give them the schema. And then you need to build in the resolver, which basically will resolve to that graph. And then you need to deploy it and build it, right? This is a another thing that you need to take care of on your infrastructure. And of course, you know, you can't have something in your infrastructure without security and observability. That's too risky, specifically because it's kind of like acting right now as your gateway. So it's really, really dangerous. So when you're looking at this, we try to figure out if there is any way for us to make that thing simpler. We're working with a lot of customers in production, and we constantly heard about that conflict, about there is this GraphQL, there is a service mesh, I already have a gateway, how is that going to work? And that's exactly why we decided to make it better. So Envoy has this amazing ability to basically be extendable. And this is why we are a big fan of that. And what you can do is basically you have the, the notion of fil filter chain, and the request is coming to the filter chain and going to a filters that you can put your own custom filter inside. And that's what Solo is doing a lot, right? So if you see about what our differentiator, we know Envoy in and out. So we have WAF support, we have data loss prevention, uh, a filter. We have AWS Lambda that calling, creating the relationship and the, the, the trust immediately. We have request and response trans transformation, one of the most, honestly, probably being used filter that we have. We brought SOAP to Envoy, right, and therefore to STO, as well, and now we basically brought GraphQL to, S to Envoy. So what does it mean? So basically, we build a GraphQL server that coming before the router, and honestly, if it will eat this, it's not going to eat the router. And basically know how to get a query and basically go and do all this round trip for you. You know how to do this. And by doing this, if you think what we just did, we now be able to leverage everything that Envoy is giving us out of the blue. So for instance, the security, the tracing, the observability, we're getting it, the caching, everything that Envoy can give me, I can basically leverage right now in GraphQL. And the only thing that we need to give him is a schema, right? to know, you know how to process the, the request, and a resolver. And the resolver, we build in a lot of our resolver, but honestly, we also create a creating an integration with Wasm that way that you can build it in any language that you want the resolver and dynamically load it to end, right? And that's really important to us. So again, basically what we just did right now is that every service slash gateway in your infrastructure know how to talk and become a GraphQL server without you need to do much. So the question, what do you need to do? And as I said, what you need to do is to give the schema and the resolver. But we actually thought that we don't even have to let you do this. So we found a way to auto-generate the schema and the resolver for you for those services. So how do we do this? Either we're using open API, or we're using, you know, um, so Swagger, or we're using, uh, you know, uh, Wisdell, or anything that we can in order to kind of like understand what the schema should be, and they're basically converted as the resolver. So again, you basically can make everything in your infrastructure with a click of a button. Now, basically serve GraphQL. Don't need to do anything. Just click a button and say, I want that service as a GraphQL. Okay, but we didn't stop there because we also think that if everything in your infrastructure is GraphQL, and again, the reason to use GraphQL, just to remind you, easy to use, right? Your the velocity of the people that consuming it will go up dramatically. So what it was very important to us is also to stitch it. Because if everything right now is a little GraphQL that represents those graphs, we also need to stitch it. And that's what we'll do in the gateway. So we actually build into that envoy. Stitching and federation is coming next. So basically, again, click off a button. You're just telling us the relationship between them, and boom, okay, everything declarative. You can actually have GraphQL, everything in your services, and stitch it on the gateway. OK, so now we have also another piece on that puzzle, right? This is, this is a product, right? This is what we are selling. And now we're selling only also that piece, which is, again, flip over a button. Everything can be queryable. But in, in Glue, it's actually even more interesting in our platform. Because in our platform, there is the ability to actually create what's called a workspace. So what does it mean, a workspace? A workspace is basically the ability to take namespace, cross-cluster, in same cluster, wherever you want, and basically create a workspace and delegate it to your team. And when you delegate to the team, you also tell me what they're allowed and not allowed to do. Okay? So basically, this is a very, very interesting way to actually expose and delegate that in your organization. The beautiful of it is now you can also export, export 
services in your workspace to the other. So for instance, I'm the billing service and I want it to be consumable by all my company, I will be able to expose it. And what will happen in the other services, they will see a catalog. And those catalog is basically will allow them to import that service. So now they will basically be able to say, I want to take those, you know, this is the services that are exposed to me. And you click on a button, I can consume them to my workspace. And if you're consuming it, let's do it the right way. And what we basically did was said, let's embed a developer portal in that process. So when you actually try to import a service in the catalog, you will be able to get everything the developer portal are giving you, which is basically the docs, try it, get the keys, whatever you want, onboarding your people very easily. And until now, you could have done it with OpenAPI and gRPC, but now we also, you can expose anyone. You can decide it, either to expose this as a REST, like it is or so, or you can expose it as a GraphQL. And then you will see that you will be able to see that you will be able to can let your team easily consume it with the playground. So that's what I have, but I wanted to kind of like summarize what I just talked about, because I think it's extremely important. What we're solving is a huge, huge technology problem. It's not easy to solve, trust me. Envoy is not easy, writing C++, async, GraphQL, inside Envoy, it's even harder. Though, which I think is very, very important, is the fact that we're solving a conflict inside your team. We had customer coming to us constantly and said, my team wants GraphQL, how is that working with Service Mesh? So here is how it works with Service Mesh. It's part of your Service Mesh. It's taking advantage of your Service Mesh. You don't need anything in your thing, and in a click on a button, you can basically enable your, your, you know, your velocity on your organization. So that's why I have, and I think I'm out of time anyway. So thank you so much, and hopefully you enjoy. <laughs>